I love this music, but I think it's time to start getting into it. I have a little bit of a hack for when the, um, for when I'm forced into playing a, um, 720p game, I just put it in the corner and I use the OBS screen. Uh, so I'm not going to beat around the bush or anything. Hopefully this goes right into it. Yes, okay. This has been 11 months after Sonic CD specifically, and Little Planet is coming back. Coming back to visit the Earth. Remember, Metal Sonic was left on the planet. And we're going to get to actually play as him in this mode, and go through Sonic 4 Episode 1's stages, the first act of each, in reverse order. Um, Sonic's uh, encounter with Eggman there, he did not realize what Eggman's plan was. And it was ultimately to get this probe out from his egg station. Um, which was sort of a low orbit uh, space station, not quite to the depth of Death Egg. Um, Sonic goes and seemingly thwarts Eggman, completely oblivious of this. It's almost as if Eggman news was distracting Sonic once he caught wind. And succeeds to get Metal Sonic restored. Enough to come back to the planet. The amount of time between the first episode and right here is a little ambiguous. Uh, the initial intent uh, the initial intent was to be like three months but that's stupid this is a matter of days like going by what happens in the game <laughs> it, however long it takes for metal to get back to the planet and get fixed so now Eggman's going to send metal to find a new power but first, he's gonna get his abilities tested, and that's the way my way of justifying that you go through and actually kill the fellow Bagnets off to a great start. Um, yeah, this is Mad Gear. It's Metropolis Zone, except it's not really Metropolis Zone. All of the Episode 1 stages are designed after previous stages from the previous, from 1 and 2, but there, there's just something distinct about each of them that makes it so that they aren't, uh, aside from the fact that we aren't on South Island and we aren't on West Side Island. <laughs> but, uh, episode 1 was not regarded very well. I am willing to forgive anything I don't like about the stages for the for A only having to do the first act of each and B getting to play as Metal Sonic. I am a big fan of Metal Sonic. These scythers aren't any better. Uh, also you're seeing we have a homing attack that we're working with. This is the first game that Sonic gets that in, too, that we see. And the way the game plays feels distinctly different. This is actually going to be a good palette cleanser coming off of Classic Sonic. Before we hit the advanced games.
Kirk. We see Sonic is on the signpost, but because he's already been through these stages. And then I become metal. Uh, one of the unique aspects, quote unquote, unique aspects about this compared to how classic games work is you can do these stages out of order. Um, and you could just do any of them in episode one, in whatever order before the egg station, the Sonic. But you can also just press Y and it'll do it in the most sensible order. Well, I was doing that really smooth and then I died. <laughs> So yeah, you can see that this place is clearly based on Labyrinth Zone, my beloved. Uh, but it's definitely also not Labyrinth Zone. The iconography is very different and very weird. And there's more spike traps. Um, for metal. Because the way they altered the first acts was to make them a little harder. Yeah, I don't... It's it's unclear what the places these places are that I'm playing through right now are, but it's where Sonic finds himself at what turns out to be the... probably the tail end of his, um, world adventures. Eh, no. He just keeps adventuring for a while. I have to stop making assumptions like that. Sonic goes through these places that are familiar to places he knows very well. Places around his home. Places, a place that looks a lot like one of them that Eggman built before. And he finds Eggman steaming. As he is wont to do. As we have established in eight games so far. <laughs> But, did I miss it? Oh, perfect, perfect, okay. <laughs> Sonic did not find out what Eggman was researching and why he was creating another sp space station. And one of those reasons, we have a cutscene to show us, is that Deep in the Lost Labyrinth, there's a dark tower. And Metal loves this power. What's fun about this is... Between... Aside from a little cameo and adventure, between CD and Adventure 2 was the next time he was active, uh, Metal gained this power called the Dark Barrier for two-player in Adventure 2. There just wasn't any explanation for why he could do that, so this game sought to give an explanation. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that personally. As you can see, this place is based on Casino Night. I am extremely curious where this even is. But the buildings are a little different. It is also some of the weakest music in this game. Uh, that was a big criticism of Episode 1. The music was very lackluster. 
compared to Sonic in general. It's not bad overall. It's still a little bit of an earworm. I particularly like Lost Labyrinth and Mad Gear. But you can honestly tell that, like, there's less of Jun Sonoi who managed the whole soundtrack's composition in this than there is in the second episode. More of his flair is there. They tried to, like, emulate the original, like, Genesis FM synth without actually just using the FM synth like it would have, and, like, that stuff still sounds great today. I know some artists that use the FM synth, and they have some jams. They just did some, like, pseudo kinda sounds like it with the same percussion. Like, this is one of the rare cases where the bar isn't met, even if it's not necessarily bad music. So it definitely gets a reputation like it's bad music. <laughs> For this episode, at least. But the subtitle for this level was In Pursuit of Sonic. Um... Something I should make sure I say before we get to that point is... Sonic seemingly is, was alone during episode 1. Um, after a, after doing the stages and a short cutscene where he has like silent banter with Eggman to try and emulate the cutscenes of the Genesis games... Oh boy. Metal's a slippery boy. Um, Eggman blasts off into the sky, and Sonic jumps off screen and takes off in a rock pit uh, that has Tails' design logo on it. So, obviously he is in contact with Tails. I, I personally believe, and I've said this before, that he, during his world travels, he has been checking in and perhaps adventuring with Tails. Nice. So after defeating the Egg Station, I'm sure Sonic realized this can't be all that so Eggman is up to. So he reconvenes with Tails to discuss and try and figure out a plan of action. And it seems Metal just missed them as they went off to take action. It's almost like the flicky... the... Uh, Clickies and the Peckies, the animals, they don't recognize that wasn't Sonic until he made that weird shockwave. But Metal has stolen a rocket. He's going on, he's he's chasing. <laughs> and that's all we get of Metal as a playable character. Um this is the Sonic 1 map, or Sonic 4 Episode 1 map. Uh, you can see there's like a gated, a walled place in the background. I re I'm really curious what that's supposed to be, but where this takes place is completely ambiguous. Over here is where we are, and there's a chance that this body of water next to these ruins is Never Lake. It doesn't look like it was before, but it's possible, and we're gonna see why in a bit. After we pick up where Sonic and Tails left off, it didn't give me the cutscene. I'm frustrated. <laughs> um, so typically, when you start this act, and it does this as well if you have all of the stages completed, 
it starts with Sonic and Tails on the tornado, uh, pointing out where their new adventure is, and they land on it and jump off into the stage. And we're at, uh, ooh, messed up. Please, please stop. Okay, I wanted to show it organically, but this game hates me. <laughs> the key feature of this episode, which I would, if they ever re, um, released it, all both of them together instead of separate games, I would love to see just having tails in the Sonic 1 stages, so you can do these tag actions. And each each of these first few stages acts as a tutorial for them. You get one per. So we only have flying on that. Oh, I keep doing that. Just to run across the water. I... <laughs> Anyway, in slippery. You can also call Tails back with a button, which is handy for two player mode. Uh, the best way to play this game is co op. One player, one player is Sonic, one player is Tails. Both can ditch each other. But both can call each other to safety. Which is good for a speedrun I watched. So there's big rings to get Chaos Emeralds in this as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But the fun thing about that for both Episode 1 and 2 is that the Chaos Emeralds are completely... Unrelated. They, they serve no purpose, you get no different ending if you get them all or not. They are just to unlock Super Sonic. And Episode 1's were reminiscent of Sonic 1's, but you turn the stage instead of controlling Sonic. For this, they decided to revisit everything about Sonic 2 and give it a different feel. Now it's sort of like third pipes instead of half pipes. Uh, but that also includes the difficulty of the following stages. <laughs> um, the 7th Emerald in this is even more of a nightmare than the 7th Emerald in the original version of Sonic 2. But, um, one of the things about Super Sonic in this is actually that if you use a tag action, it cancels Super Sonic. And so it's almost useless to have. There are some cases where invincibility is good, but, uh, I guess... It's something I've alluded to this whole time. The power of the emeralds can't compare to the power of friendship. Yeah, I like this music better. So what we learn to do in this stage is the... Submarine... <laughs> Combo, which is broken. Because you can do it forever, and it's faster than most things. Underwater. And it's true, the real Chaos Emeralds were the friends we made along the way. You're so right. There are too many obstacles this way. I don't usually go this way. like a bubble. Uh, no bubble for me. 
we're flashing back to aquatic ruins, aren't we? <laughs> The weird thing is that you actually cannot do... ...the tag action until you see the sign the first time. The reason I could do it in the first stage was because I... ...played through it to unlock Episode Metal, which you unlock after backing out and going back in. If you have save data for Sonic 4 Episode 1, that's the only way you get that. And that's part of the reason it would be great to re-release this as a as both games together. So you don't have to have them You don't have to get a inferior version of the game they can make better. Just to play as Metal Sonic. Another reason that the... Oh, why'd I do that? That the, um... Ag... Actions are so handy is... One of the things about just the nature of this game, how it, the game feel, is that it's very easy to misgauge the edge of a ledge when you jump off. Very often instead, and this is especially for the episode 1 stages and metal, you'll just do the homing tack boost and fling yourself forward instead of jumping, because there's no pixel precision. If you have tails, you can just go into the flight and recover. <laughs> I like to boost in these early stages at all times because, um, much like boosting in some later games, your ring radius where, uh, where you collect them increases, so it is just both faster and easier to get rings with this little amount of obstacles. <laughs> Alright. Um, obstacles really suck because of the way they slow you down in this, though. The bombs will take your rings, the electricity just slows you down. Good job, Tails. There is actually, um, I will get to this during the credits, there's a, pr there's a reason, there's something I want to do with the story that, um, it's best if the Chaos Emeralds just aren't there. It's also something that can just be ignored. Who knows? That'll make sense once I give it context. <laughs> so, the Moonlight Lake. Now. But, well, that's not a moon. That looks like a little planet, but there's a mechanical scaffolding over it. Um, so that can't be good. Okay, I don't have the next tag action yet. I usually use it there. Our next tag action... I don't know why this is Dark Souls, but we have the... You know, I forget what 
this is called, because now I know it as just the Tide Pod. Sonic and Tails become an immortal and indestructible Tide Pod. I don't know what Dark Root Garden is. <laughs> Uh, but no, um, Eggman is building around the little planet, uh, in a- you can actually sort of see, if the cloud wasn't there, it sort of looks like the framing of the Death Egg. Okay. you can just cancel out immediately. I messed that up. Maybe we can do it on this one, actually. No, I just suck right now. <laughs> this one for sure. Yeah. Skip the possibility of immediate death. It's very, honestly, it's very cute in general how much they really run with just, like, Sonic and Tails do everything together in this game, in this episode particularly. They really, they, they, they absolutely learned their lesson with the first episode where people don't want just Sonic, even though there was a loud minority that insisted that they only wanted to play as Sonic. <laughs> but this game really did not get a good reputation. There were supposed to be three ep episodes, but we only got two. I get that, like, the controls feel weird, especially when you're, it's next to, like, Generations, which was out around the same time. But it's not bad. It's 
this episode at least is still within the realm of things I enjoy more than Sonic 1. One of episode 1's gimmicks. See, now Eggman is straight up taunting Sonic and Tails to come follow him. Like, his plan's in full effect now. Uh, one of the gimmicks of Sonic Episode 1 was just rehashing old bosses. You remember Aquatic Ruins? Well, this is just saying fuck you to that idea entirely. Sonic, because you don't need these pillars. It's got a big plant robot. <laughs> sort of a way of saying, don't worry, we're not doing that again. Okay. Now this, this, um, boss can be very fast, if you get the homing aiming correct. Because you're supposed to take a bit to figure out, you're supposed to fly to do it quickly. <laughs> so you don't see these tentacles actually do damage to me. You don't want me to do another? What kind of you? I might still need to do two hits, but... I think it's only eight. Don't worry, he planned for this. Okay, I do have to do two more. But he doesn't get to shoot his cannon, because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and look how woobified the clickies and peckies are in this. It is very... <laughs> it is very little sharp shop of horrors. Feeling. Don't worry, there's a better boss joke later. That you'll definitely get. So, let's go to that icy area. Since it's night. I don't know why I did that. Very festive over here, though. And there's, like, a wooden roller coaster? So I don't think... I, I don't think Eggman made this one. I think this might be a normal carnival. But we don't go there yet. We have to have snow. Oh, what am I doing? It is really hard to stop your momentum once it's going in this. Sometimes Eggman needs to find some natural homegrown carnivals instead of making his own. If you stop doing the Tide Pod in this, you will just get crushed by snow. I, I, I guess I should talk about how this game is actually called Sonic 4, which is weird. There's a very weird history in the quest for Sonic 4, and it's almost like tongue-in-cheek in the same way that people are always asking for Sonic Adventure 3, even though there has technically been three candidates that could be considered Sonic Adventure 3. Uh, 
Um, but I've said before, um, the first attempt was Sonic Crackers, which eventually got turned into Knuckles Chaotix. Uh, also, like, arguably, Sonic 3 was Sonic 4 because of CD. Also, arguably, Sonic 2 for Genesis was Sonic 4 because of Sonic 1 and 2 8-bit versions, which were different games. So it's really just, it's very much a symbolic game. Uh, the, the second attempt for Sonic, for a fourth console, main console Sonic game, we'll put it that way. Uh, that project ended up turning into, um, 3D Blast. Um, and then, the next one they were working on was called, was going to be called Sonic Extreme. And this is a case where it never actually got released. Like, the game it was intended to be, there was no actual release of it that transformed. And though a lot of ideas that were tossed around in it were recycled into adventure, and even some later games, uh, like this, in fact, and Colors. <laughs> uh, there wasn't, like, a genuine plot to that. Like, they had plenty of ideas that never came to fruition. But... The key things to Sonic Extreme were that it was going to be the first full 3D Sonic game, and they had this interesting graphical style to it that uh, gave the world a very curved look, like it was through a fisheye lens. And there were a few, char uh, a few new characters, one of which was going to be playable. Her name was Tiara Bubowski. And she was a Manx cat, the first cat. She had a father named Gazebo, who, uh, his design honestly reminds me of Monty from Rescue Rangers, more so than anything. And there were only like a few gameplay demos, like development demos that came out for it. Um, but ultimately, they did end up scrapping it entirely. That's bad. And I'm not sure why. Um, I think they just couldn't, like, get a game that worked going that would be released for the Sega Saturn. That, that was the point, to have a console Sega Saturn title, which they didn't have a new one for Sonic. Uh-oh. Um, in fact, the fascinating thing I found, didn't realize, was, um, Japan never got 3D Blast until after Adventure came out. They, they didn't, it was like the last Saturn release in Japan, while in America, 3D Blast was both the last, um, Genesis release and the first, um, Saturn release. And then, really, like, I guess any, like, 3D Sonic that did get functionally developed for Saturn ended up going into the, the Sonic Jam compilation, which is one through Knuckles playable on the Saturn, with a few fix-ups, like how Sonic 1 has a spin dash in that. But there was also, like, a hub world for you to explore, and, like, Tails was flying around, you could grab a ride with him. You, there was just a bunch of collectibles to run around with Sonic to do, which was kind of neat. I, I played plenty of that. <laughs> uh oh, right, we're at the bombs. So luckily, <laughs> a good thing about these special stages is, unlike Sonic 2, you can restart and retry. <laughs> In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and do that preemptively, because I've hit bombs twice in this first segment.
trying to be fast. Skip these cycles if you want, if you have enough rings. I like to play it safe. And have the next one finished before I even start it. Because it gets harder from here. I messed that up. Oh, I messed that up. Oh no. Things aren't looking good. See, you can jump them. It doesn't matter sometimes. This area just sucks. I'm going to assume it was 300. I, I have this bad habit of not even paying attention to how many rings I need for these. Yeah, the four, the what ended up being the fourth. There, there was even some music for Extreme that I played. I played one earlier. I might play another for a later. This underwater stage is fine because it is literally just let's let's roll tails. <laughs> There's never been. been a water stage that I've been more okay with, perhaps, going in the water route, at least. Got it. Okay, I guess I can't just <laughs> jump. Um, but the, the true fourth Sonic console release did end up being Sonic Adventure with a handful of recycled ideas from Stream. The reason this was even called 4, which was probably a bad idea, but it was entirely to pander to uh, revisiting to 2D style gameplay, which, again, generations and Colors were out by this point, or at least by the by the time episode two came out. This was a 2013 release. So, in a lot of ways, like this was a game I was looking forward to for sure. Especially this second episode. This second episode did not disappoint because the first time I played it was actually co-op, which is the best way to play it. And I've known people to say they do not like this game, but then they played the co-op version and it's like, actually this is pretty solid. Because multiplayer is fun. It's actually... I found that's the case for some people with Knuckles Chaotix too, despite how chaos driven that is. Just playing Sonic together with people is great, apparently. I, I almost wish I had someone who actually has this game I could have co-op with for this stream. <laughs> but like, you could tell that the way I was talking about episode one, they really went with pandering to like, the classic Sonic fans that said one and two 
were the best, like the ones that I have complained about in previous streams. <laughs> and this one they decided to be more... They, they were way more original with the way they did the stages, I would say. Um, it's definitely, they still take ideas from 2 and 3 and mash them together, but they make it work. Alright, nope. I want to take a safety reese try there. Because <laughs> I don't want to, like, have to re-attempt getting the, a stage to get the rings again. But, like, they also, like, definitely learned their lesson by being like, we're going to continue the story from Sonic CD in this next episode. Um, to bridge a gap that we sort of left hanging. Um, like, you could have just assumed at any point Eggman either rebuilt or retrieved um, metal. But, like, why not make a game out of it? And I think one of the disappointments was perhaps that they went with a modern Sonic style to show that time has in fact passed since CD and those previous games. Which makes sense, because that's the style it goes into in the future. That was enough. Yeah. Sonic doesn't even look like he looks about the age he looks in the original adventure. Uh, look that they gave him, which he's only seemed to like age since then, like little by little. Getting to check what the rings amount that I do need is, but this is the second to last emerald. We've gotten it one for one each time, so we just have the hardest one left. Someone get else here? I guess there's also the issue with, like, this game also 100% seals the deal on when something involving metal can happen. Uh, speaking of which, he's caught up to us. Uh, you can do oil, the next stage, Oil Desert, first, but uh, it just makes way more sense that you would go to a nighttime place after the last stage went to nighttime, and that metal would actually catch up to you. Also, the little planet's even closer in the background. And that's why I think that that lake might... that... might be never lake, even though it doesn't quite look like it. Like, it's down here nice and close. It seems to be run running on its own. Uh... its own schedule before Eggman decides to start building on it. This one. What was I supposed to do? Why? That would have slowed me down. Oh, just blow up the track instead, please. save myself. 
I asked for it. I did. Basically, you have half Eggman battles, half metal battles. I didn't know there was that much RNG in that attack. Hockey and Pecky. Oh, Peckies are sliding. I think what I was saying, the chronology of when Metal Sonic can even happen is sort of sealed thanks to this game, and that might also be something some fans are bitter about. Uh, like I said though, um, as much as uh, people like to insist that, people actually like to insist that Sonic CD happened very early, there's plenty of room to just have like a rivalry happening between Sonic and Metal before that showdown happens. That also doesn't need to be the first time Amy shows up. Excuse you. <clears throat> I also forgot to mention something about my bitterness with how Knuckles Chaotix is treated, because... Like, I was gonna bring this up when I was talking about Charmy. Um, because honestly, like, <clears throat> while his personality is not what they say in those manuals in that, it's sort of like, the way they handled the Chaotix in Heroes was to basically remake the characters, and the way that, like, the current comic writer thinks of, uh, considers Chaotix is it to just not be canon. That's like super frustrating to me because it's Knuckles Chaotix is beautifully written to A expand on the Ring Emerald lore and B bridge Sonic 3 and Knuckles into Sonic CD. Like that was almost the purpose of the story it was given. You have a start you have Sonic Metal Sonic start, and then CD is Metal Sonic's classic end. With it, except for in Mania when they use the powers of the illusion movie to <coughs> powers of a ruby illusion ruby to interface with Little Planet while it's nowhere near. 
and what's stopping to use metal there. So, like, the reason I was reminded of this is because there's no reason that your Sonic fan games, which are... There's some really cool ones happening out there. If they include Metal Sonic, they can just happen before Sonic CD. Nothing's stopping that. Which I think is something that even Sega can monopolize on. Because they have realized people love Metal Sonic. <laughs> but they would have to make any more material involving Metal Sonic in a classic... A game involving classic characters happen before CD. And honestly, I'd like a situation where Amy gets to hang out before she gets kidnapped for that. Because she is pretty capable. The thing is, Metal Sonic's perhaps Eggman's greatest creation. I'm gonna... I need to get those rings if I'm gonna do this one right. I need 500 rings by the end of this. Like, also, it's... It seems to be that Metal Sonic is, like, the one... robot that... Uh, Eggman has made that is not powered by an animal. It is... Effectively, whatever AI is going on with Metal Sonic is its own being, and there's no influence there. That's not good. I need those as well. I told you, I tell you, this is a very hard special stage. I'm so glad I can just retry. I'm surprised I haven't hit bombs yet, and that's not the reason I'm restarting. I am playing a little careful. Good. 182. Like, this one makes Sonic 2's last one look like child's play. This one is... savage. Playing it without practice. That was... gross. Do I even have enough? Okay. I wanted to be in the 400s by now, though. This is all tricky, technical bonus stuff from here on out. I can tell you immediately that if I missed that, I'm not going to get it. I guess arguably you could consider me even doing this part, just being like stream like padding. Because it sure as heck is not story relevant, which is the reason we're here. Kidding me? Eat up. Also, very glad that Tails does not lose rings when he gets hit by bombs in this one. <laughs> Oh, okay. 
fine. Still fine for now. I needed to get that one. <laughs> Gosh. Hopefully one more try. I'm very hopeful. Because this is about to get I'm gonna I'm gonna give up after this next one. Cause this is boring. <laughs> I'm out of auxiliary stuff to say that isn't related to the actual game happening in front of me. Alright. Well. No emeralds for us. Oh. I guess I can still try. But it's not gonna work. I can't just exit out because, um... I have to hit the next stage button. Oh, what am I doing? I jumped so early and yet I missed all of the ten rings. My exact mood, guys! <laughs> My exact mood! So... What we're gonna say, actually, is that Sonic and Tails only have two Chaos Emeralds. Put that in your pocket. Sometimes there's these, like, item boxes that do this. Just a team attack. It's kind of resembling... something in, uh, Sonic Heroes, actually. as annoying as, um, the oil in Sonic Mania. There's a little thing that I say. Um, there are two types of Sonic fans. One that considers Sonic Mania an apology for no Sonic 4 Episode 3, and ones that consider it an apology for Sonic 4 in general. There is a small chance I am the only person in the former. <laughs> Those 
Act 2. Who doesn't love filling sand? Like this is sort of a thing they did in um, Sandopolis Act 2, but it does feel very different. These are very annoying versions of these, like, orb ones because you can't hurt them even when... Um... Even when they're not spewing the fire. These sand traps are so dumb. Because you, can, you can't move once you are in them. So it's like, how am I supposed to maneuver around it? Get out of here. I meant by there will be no more Chaos Emeralds. Like, I'm not even going to have enough rings to attempt. <laughs> Maybe in the next at, uh, zone. But this this oil refinery was powering Mad Gear. There are pipes on the map that lead from it to that. Um, so now that facility is pretty much one and done. And we can move on to the near Automata reference of the game. Which is not really, I think this came out before Automata. <laughs> this was a... Um... Well, let me finish the joke first. Uh, Dr. Eggman here, creating the first prototype of Engels. Uh, one of the things about for episode 1 and 2, both of them, is it's not just that they were like designed to pander to 2D Sonic fans to get classic fans into it. Um, it was also supposed to be like a smaller budget game on the side of the bigger 3D ones. One that they could... Th this came out for WiiWare, Xbox Live Arcade, and Mobile. Um, and the Wii version... Wii and Mobile versions of Episode 1 was full of gimmicks for, like, motion control. Um, so much so that they actually had, like, different stages, uh, in some cases. 
uh, namely Lost Labyrinth Act 2, is a minecart segment. Um, it also has, like, um, torches. I, m I might be, no, because Act 3 is, like, full underwater. Um, and the way you control that in, um, the mobile and at least the mobile version is by tilting your phone around. Oh, come on. I don't need to do that. I mean, it would make sense if you do that with the Wiimote. It was designed to only need, like, a few buttons. Oh, that was not in its way. This is a very long battle. <laughs> he is impervious if I try to hit him when he's still open afterwards. I mean... He is... The mechanical one. I guess a hacker would be. Oh. Anyone in this game can hack if they try enough. Wrong way, you idiots. There's a very, very small window to do this. There we go. I have to do this weird, like, finale thing. <laughs> I bet that sounds great. Chunky green bars. Let's see. Talked about episode one, what Sonic did while metal was happening. Talked about Sonic Extreme. A bit about Chaotix, I meant to. I don't think I have anything ex ex uh, extra to add. Uh, but we do have our Sky Chase rehash right here. But it's full of additional extra bits. Instead of just having like a cool aesthetic and a train at one point like... Like Mirage Saline did. Uh, this, this is a very cool stage in co-op. Because the strategy to do it is just... Um, when you're co-op, someone c controls Tails fully, and so they're controlling the tornado, and then someone else can just run around as Sonic. What you're gonna do, if you just want to cheese it, have Sonic go into Spin Dash, and have Tails just use him as a battering ram. <laughs> and that will get you through pretty much the entire stage, except for one segment where Sonic has to leave the tornado. But things can't be easy. They'll spice it up all they can. Metal's got. People say this looks like a Kyogre, his airship. <laughs> yeah, they teach you some basic mechanics and then. And they start mashing everything together. So like you 
We got proper game design happening here, at least, that's for sure. If any point, um, if Tails gets caught on something, like if you're on a platform, he will just fly off and go to, like, the next available area. Like one of these. Show up right in front of the checkpoint. Also, this is the last time the tornado is gonna look like this. Uh, that's... In my opinion, a key reason that this game takes place before Advance. Kale's is about to give it a makeover. Bon voyage, Tails. I'll see you on the other side. I can kind of question, like, what these parts even are. It's like, I guess part of the airship is sticking down. So some of them are just entirely separate. Stand on this back part, which is a feature of, um, if you're controlling Tails and Sonic separately. I think it's sort of a mini-boss where we actually fight back against Metal. And I missed it. This can, like, really drag on if you miss any of the cannonballs. It's basically the stage keeps going until you defeat him. Oh, how did I miss that one? Let's get on that airship. Just like Wing Fortress, just like Flying Battery. I think this one's called Sky Fortress.
I just like the stage. It's... Like I said, the way the way that they handled mixing flying battery elements and Wing Fortress elements in Mania, it involves a lot of mashing up stuff that I don't like from like from Sonic 2. And then, like, making the sage super long. And then making just the parts I like from 3 weird. Now this just feels like its own separate stage. It, like, clearly has some Wing Fortress element, uh, aesthetic, but, like, the design elements are almost non-existent. And the next act actually has some stuff from the original, well not the original, the Sonic 3 Death Egg. In a way that I actually think is cooler than it's utilized in the Death Egg. <laughs> Mile High Mayhem. Something the aesthetic actually reminds me a bit of overall is, um... I forget what it's called in Sonic Advance 1. Oh god, okay, I guess we're taking this route. It's impossible to get back up. It's fine, it's just a very small deviation. Small deviation becomes a big one. Um, there, there's a rocket that you get on in that. Um, I'm actually contemplating just going ahead and running both. Um, advance 1 and Advance 2 next, instead of just Advance 2 like I've intended. Um, the, the, the reason I wasn't going to in the first place is because the amount of Advance 2 you have to play to unlock the ending Supersonic bit is a lot perhaps more than a stream's worth, because you have to play through it with every character, and you, you at least have to beat it, but you need the Chaos Emeralds with one character. Um, namely, you need them with Sonic, which is the trickiest character to get them with. Like, the game is kind of savage in terms of difficulty that way. <laughs> I might just set up a file ahead of time and do advance one as well. Cause I I don't I actually just don't feel good about skipping solid Sonic games. Like advance one is my least favorite for sure. But like, they all kind of feel... they both kind of feel weird to play. So it's not like... I, I, I probably shouldn't be considering it that much worse. Nailed it. It's just lackluster compared to Advanced One, but it's not, like, 
actually bad. It also doesn't have, like, that much impact, story speaking, is the thing, so I'm not gonna have a lot to talk about if I just skip it. <laughs> I'm just gonna be showing both games. Get back on that plane. I'm gonna... Metal Sonic's got an upgrade on his Kyogre. The lasers are powerful now. It's funny, you can, if you have all the Chaos Emeralds, do Super Sonic to just not take damage in this, but, like, it doesn't help at all. You still get knocked back. It is the most useless boss to use supersonic on. We get him. With my mouth. Oh, good forward. <laughs> Fine, I can miss one of those. Oh, he gave me the worst. There's no way to hit him that way, unless you're like super prepared for it. I thought he was going to do this. This is what I'm used to when he flies like that. Ooh. We've done plenty of damage to this Sky Fortress. Probably throwing an exploding mini ship into it did the final shot, but we gotta land on it somewhere. There's still a capsule of animals we have to save. I have a lot of lives, I realize. You just rack them up. You ain't getting past me. But we gotta follow them somehow, we can't just leave. Gotta get the space. Because the Death Egg Mark II has been completed, with Little Planet trapped inside. I genuinely don't know what trapping Little Planet inside accomplishes. Perhaps it is being used as an energy source. 
Uh, there is a motion sickness warning for this one. A lot of swerving. We thought, uh, the first step eggs gravity mechanics were weird. This is perhaps the weirdest in the series. There's plenty of other space stations with gravity mechanics and cyberspaces. Got a show, a uh, showdown here with both Eggman and Metal, but we're just facing. We're just want to hit damage Metal. As Eggman left himself impervious, in a good position. Good position to get sandwiched. My way, egg. Only have to hit him three times. That's not the end of the stage either. Um. You, they fly off to have that moment that's basically comic strip I did in the starting screen. No, I thought- I mean, not literally. <laughs> that comic implies that Eggman was not there to witness it. <laughs> weird. Okay, whatever. I've never had this happen before. Okay. Finally! Okay. Yeah, I thought that was a platform you can't pass after you passed it. I don't know why it was doing that. I am experiencing some gravity weirdness in the lights that I have never before in this game. <laughs> Maybe it's because I started a new save file for this? Who knows? So Metal wants a rematch. Um, and you could totally do this with Supersonic, but this is the real way to do it. Again, our friendship is the strongest. I'm gonna botch it in a way that I have never botched it before. Like, not since my first game for Playboy. Embarrassing. So Metal Sonic's a little too worse for wear to do anything else. But that was mostly a distraction for Eggman to prepare his final weapon.
Any extra rings? The heart of the death egg. is a key example of where you want to use the power of friendship over, say, supersonic. <laughs> Very cinematic boss. I don't know what that accomplishes. You do have to be careful with your rings though. If you leave them for too long, they will get sucked in and, and fly away by gravity. Stuck underneath Eggman. <laughs> Up there. Or just, you know, ignore it. That's fine. The last three times I fought this boss, I did not die. <laughs> I was thinking I might be able to skip it. I haven't even been going two hours yet. Huh. This game is shorter than I thought it would be. Uh, frankly, I think I mentioned I can't even open Sonic Episode 1 anymore. Uh, even if I wanted to do all of those stages, um, one and a half times. I kind of don't. Sure. I definitely could have powered through that within a stream's time on top of this. Was the last time, sure. start using a barrier. Need to roll into.
needs only one or two more hits. Chaos Emeralds or not, you get the exact same ending scene. They were not part of Eggman's plan at all. Little Planet was. Credits roll. We get to watch the Death Egg shut down. And this is actually when I want to start talking about Sonic the Fighters. Because, um, the story is kind of invalid in general, because there's eight emeralds in it. Eight emeralds and then the Master Emerald. I don't even know why that's included, but there's like a pink, purple, and magenta emerald, only one blue, a yellow and uh, orange, no Goshenite, uh, no white. The emerald array in that game is an affront. But there is some good story to mine from that, um, because it sort of reflects this game itself, it's almost like an alternate telling, but even more so, it can actually be a follow-up to this. Uh, like if it were to be remastered to use more modern style designs, um, I would call that game Sonic for the Fighters, personally. Um, and the thing that happens in that, um, Sonic and Tails get reports from Espio and the Chaotix that uh, Badniks have been swarming all over the place, coming from what they find to be a new space station called the Death Egg 2, which is what this thing is. It looks different though, um, and Metal Sonic is there with Eggman. What I propose is, I mean, Eggman just reassembled a new like, reassembled this Death Egg into something that can propel itself back to the planet instead of drifting off with Little Planet. And... picked up his plan where he left off. Um... Now, the, the funny thing about the story... the reason that the characters are fighting at all in Sonic the Fighters is they gave... They, uh, Sonic and Tails decided with their friends that they should all look after one Chaos Emerald. And Tails decides to make what's called the Lunar Fox a spaceship to... which can get them up to the Death Egg. Probably like after like not having a way to get up there here. They've had to makeshift their way up there multiple times. But it needs enough power that all of the Chaos Emeralds are needed to power it to get to the Death Egg. So, for example, they go to Knuckles to get the Chaos Emerald he's looking after, and he goes, well, obviously if there's only one seat in the spaceship, the toughest should go, and that's me. And so, Sonic and Knuckles decide to fight because they each think each other's tougher. This goes through for all the characters that are in it. The weird thing about the character setup is that um, the, there are eight playable characters, that's why they gave eight emeralds. It's Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Espio, Mac, the Weasel, Bean the Dynamite Duck, and Bark the Polar Bear, who are not Sonic's friends. Um, 
what I actually... Like, it's funny enough that Amy is looking after one of these, and I think that's actually kind of... Like, if we do a modern style, I think Sonic would actually trust her with that. But I think we should give one of the emeralds to Mighty. Um, and then I think, I like, since that leaves us with only one more emerald if we get rid of the eight, uh, Knack and his band there, they're kind of thieves. They just got their hands on it when they weren't supposed to, so that's like, they need to fight them to get that back. That makes sense to me. Um, so after they each, they basically have a Budokai Tenkaichi and find out who's the strongest. I guess, like, maybe you could say that if you play as Knack, he's doing it to get all the Chaos Emeralds and steal a spaceship and finds himself in a weird, like, situation. Like, like they exist. We saw them, their Persona Gen Mania. Um, but like, just because I don't think it either, um, in case you didn't see the comic. Um, uh, when they get, when, when you, they get up to the Death Egg there, they have to have a 1v1 with metal, and after they destroy it, uh, you fight with Eggman in a little, like, Egg Walker with this, it's really cool. Um, and that results in the actual destruction of this Death Egg. It, it, like, it fits perfectly as an explanation for how Eggman even gets back to um, Earth. Because they do escape the wreckage, him and Metal, and now they're just back for anything to happen. Uh, as for Little Planet's fate, this is the last time we see it. There has never been another game where Little Planet shows up, and I don't know if that's a matter of, like, being turned into the Death Egg Mark II, turned it, like, altered its course so it never shows up again? Ugh. Who could say? Not me. It's very frustrating that every time I click away from the game, the music stops. But yeah, like, that... There's potential for story there. We, I'm going to put that in my headcanon for this world, because Sonic the Fighters ain't doing anything else, and it's fun. Um, that concludes our start for, Metal, for Modern Sonic, with one of the, like, this is the third to last game to actually, third to last platforming Sonic game to actually come out, so it's very, very recent. <laughs> um, well pick up with Advance next time, and I'll explain why I'm doing that before Adventure. Uh, until then, bye-bye. <laughs>